take a look at this pond here. It's so small and innocent looking with a little school of box turtles just swimming around, so cute. It's gonna play a large role in this game. So welcome to some Arabia. We'll have Daniel in the south as the red, playing as the Ethiopians. Daniel, the number one USA player, so I got some national pride here. And he has been the number one for a few years. And then he'll be playing against Hart in the Britons. Their Elo's 2740 against 2497. So two really good players. And if you take a look at these maps here, it's one of those Arabias that has two forests per player and a big circle of hills around each player's base. Maybe somewhat reminiscent of those old Vubli maps where you had the huge valley, especially in the south with the flat hills at the top. Not quite that level of hill, but still pretty big. But Daniel, he's going to see those berries at the front of his base and decide, this map is awful. My golds are forward, all three of them. The second stone is forward. The berries are on that hill. And the only thing that could be safe, maybe he could wall to the edge of the map, is that stone. Well, that stone and the lake. And I've... I know that we joke about fish booming in the ponds on Arabia sometimes, but this game was played on March 31st, not April 1st. This game is no joke. As Daniel's pushing in that gazelle, he's sending not four, but five villagers to that wood line. That's something you only do if you're going to build that dock in the Dark Age, and there goes the villager. She is going for the dock. Now, this is an archer matchup. And usually that means there's going to be a lot of skirms. Britons can be a sieve that opens scouts sometimes, but uh, with how tight the Dark Age builds are, we're going to see Hart doing a lumber camp and a barracks. The so-called French rush, where you skip the mill, he'll add in two militia on his way up. And he has a forward main gold, but a back second gold he can take later on. So he's going to do loom and go up 19 pop, pretty standard for the up speeds these days, as he pushes in some gazelles too from the back, and he's up to feudal. Daniel, if you look at the res collected, he has much fewer resources collected now because he has been going for that wood line and going for that dock, adding in the fishing ship. He might close the distance a bit, and he also doesn't have the eco bonus of the Britons who are collecting from their sheep faster. But here it comes, the two militias coming forward. <laughs> so neither player with a mill this game. What does Age of Empires come to? But Daniel at least has a plan for getting food with those two fishing ships already. Now, Daniel is going to wall up towards the TC and use the TC as part of his walls. He's now aware that the militia are coming in, going to wall up by that wood line. And since he sees the militia opening, he can be pretty confident that the Britain's player is just going to be going for an archery range instead of a stable. It's maybe trickier to wall up against scouts because the TC doesn't shoot scouts and fend them off the way it does militia, men-at-arms, or an archer. Scout gets in, but then the militia get walled out. Maybe Hart could have micro that better to get the militia in, but... Still only two militia, kind of hard to do too, too much damage, as Daniel will be walling up on the side, but he has two fishing ships working. He's up to feudal much slower, and when I say much slower, this is still the timing of a 21-pop scout build. And for, for old-school players like me, I never cease to be amazed by how fast these builds are. So Daniel, Lumber Camp and Dock versus Lumber Camp and Barracks, as we just have the archery range being added in there from Hart. And Scout will be running around from Hart, and oh boy, he's going to see Daniel has docked. Two fishing ships taking that box turtle, and the Scout's going to run around and start boinking them. Now, maybe Daniel could make a fire galley here <laughs> to defend his fish, but he's going to lose that one as he brings his Scout over, but then gets the first hit on the Scout, so Hart's going to have to run. That second fishing ship will be safe, and we'll see if Daniel decides to add in more fish behind this. Now, he's going for archers himself. Now, always kind of curious. Looks like he, at 105 gold, must have been long distance mining some gold there, maybe? No. Oh, wait, no, never mind. He's the Ethiopians. He's the Ethiopians, right? So he gets extra 100 gold when he clicks up. So he clears the scout from the back. Nothing left to harass his fish. And now Hart's just like, oh, I want to use my two militia to harass your berries. <laughs> but Daniel's like, joke's on you. I'm not taking those berries. So, archers coming out over that range. And one vill getting stuck in the wood line. Militia don't really have anything to harass. They've been walled out. Daniel moved that wall vill back. And now the archers, they can find the spear. But spears aren't really going to do too much now in the archer. And when I say archer, probably I mean skirmisher matchup with Daniel not mining gold. 
always have to be careful not to train too many archers if you're not mining gold, because you need to make sure you have 50 gold for fletching. You need the, the range that provides. Even if skirm versus skirm, the attack doesn't really matter. And Daniel's thinking about just getting the mill. Now, here's the problem with this build. He needs the mill to unlock farms. And even if he has four fishing ships and he's going for fish traps, he's still going to need to have a few farms that that one little pond isn't large enough to sustain the, the Black Forest-style fish boom, where you go for three or four docks and surround them with fish traps. Uh, I don't like the farm on the front of the TC. I would have preferred to see it on the back, maybe. Now the archers can harass that a bit. But uh, the mill there on the berries, eventually he might take the berries, but mainly that's just going to unlock farms for him. Uh, fletching in for heart, just coming in for Daniel there. And now resources collected. We still have that slight lead for heart. And still, still only a 1-0 to zero eco KD from that one fishing ship. Right, right now, Hart has all the map control, and Daniel has to find some way to survive when Hart has that hill at the front of his base. And maybe the skirmishers will help out here, as Hart had gone for some archers, maybe thinking he wanted to break in and kill villagers, but not really going to be able to do that And with all the wallings and then continue fighting against the skirms. We'll need some skirms of his own, or maybe a scout transition, but looks like he's going for the skirms. As he's going to add in a market, he's been having a nice peaceful farming eco behind this. 12 farms, 1 range, 4 vills on gold. And when you're going 1 range, you can just add the market and click up much faster than you can in those 2 range team game builds. Always kind of tricky to manage there. But 1 range should be nice and fast, and he wants to get up and get that extra range for the Britain crossbows. Then, especially, if you're in the Castle Age and you get crossbows with 8 range, oh, you do a great job of fighting off those feudal skirms when they have a, a puny 5 range. So, nice micro here. I mean, 5 to 2 KD in favor of Hart, but if he has mostly archers, still going to be hard to keep that up. Daniel doing a second range there. He's just going to be pumping the skirms. But behind this, as he picks off the militia with the skirms, he's now gotten up to 7 fishing ships. He can do another 2 fish traps there. Maybe he has a limit of... Eight. He's got six already. Yeah, I think he can definitely fit one more there. Maybe he could fit one behind the dock. That's each terrain there. But he is he's going hard for those fish traps there. And he's going to be mining some stone in the back too. Maybe thinking that he could need a tower defense. Maybe thinking that he can just do a market and sell it if his gold's so far forward. A tower on the gold might be necessary at some point. Or just a full-on tower defense around his base if he knows that his opponent will be up to castle faster and is going for archers. Now, he's moving out with skirms. This is a big risk right here, because he doesn't have a scout anymore. Looks like he had probably lost that somewhere forward or lost it to the archers at some point. And he's still not able to take his berries. He can do nothing but watch his mill burn. Doesn't have horse collar on his farms either. And again, all of his resources save that stone are very far forward. So scouts, or uh, skirms going forward is always a risk, because if you haven't scouted, you know... You don't know whether your opponent has a stable, and if Hart were to have two or three scouts right now, all those skirms would just be cleaned up instantly. Now, Hart does have a forward gold, but it is just a bunch of Feudal Age skirmishers. Their javelins have three attack, and that's against the two Pierce Armor of the Villagers, so that's one damage they do unless they have a hill bonus, and it's 1.25, if I do my math correctly. Which is always a big risk. Usually the math I do doesn't have numbers in it, so it's always a challenge for me to get the numbers right. <laughs> anyway, the archers and skirms now moving forward. Once those get their extra range and become crossbows, they'll do a good job of picking off those feudal skirms. Only, or it'll be four PS armor, but it'll be up to seven attack there for the crossbow, so they actually do a pretty good job of killing them when you have that age advantage. And there's Hart up to the Castle Age, and Daniel towering the gold and towering his wood line. So he knows he does not want to let the crossbows in. He's going to be reinforcing his palisade walls with houses. Crossbows can break through palisades, but not so much through houses. And immediately we see those five range on the skirms, but six on the archers with the Britain bonus. Bodkin comes in to now make that seven, and then crossbow will come in to make that eight in just a moment. And there we go. Eight range, seven attack, and Daniel still not even up to the castle age, but 400, 500 more resources collected. He's just towering the front of his base, and look at that vill difference. 50 to 37. Eight of those are fishing ships working down here on the fish traps. Has a good farming eco, and we'll have three watchtowers defending. 
And now those skirms won't be too effective. Difficult for Hart to continue engaging. Daniel now has enough skirmishers. He could be threatening that main gold. But Hart looks like he's going for a workshop and will be making some manganels. Not going for the forward workshop. We'll be moving the manganels across the map, mind you. But it is at least some siege to help deal with the skirms. As he has his skirms at the front to tank the damage from the javelins, crossbows in the back to stay out of range, and just do some damage from afar. Now Daniel doing a good job of microing this. KD is still pretty equal. But the longer this goes, the, the more skirmishers that get whittled down, and that means we're going to have fewer elite skirmishers. So in the straight-up fight, the faster-firing Ethiopian archers would win against the Britons, but with micro and the extra range, usually I very strongly prefer the Briton crossbows in this matchup. And you always get to see how do crossbows versus skirms fare at the extra range on the crossbows for the Britons makes it harder for Daniel to go for the Manganel defense because the Briton crossbows will outrange them. Now, Daniel down to around seven skirms will run into a lion and maybe thinking about running forward and counterattacking, but workshop for defense with Manganels will be there. Bill's coming forward for Hart. That's super important for him to be able to repair the Manganels. Now, the Watchtowers, remember, they have less HP in the Feudal Age than they did back in the AOC days. They get an HP boost when they reach the Castle Age, so Hart will repair that Manganel. And also just dance on the hill, again, crossbows against Feudal Skirms. And maybe use the Archers to think about picking off repair Vils. The Manganel comes forward a bit to attack around the side of the tower where the Vils would be repairing. So that tower will go down. And we're going to have double stables in the back for Daniel. Now, no bloodlines for the Ethiopians. They don't have the best night line. But sometimes knights are just what you have to do. Sometimes you have to say, you know what, I'm playing an archer sieve, but knights are the right call in this situation. And he sees the crossbows are there, but they don't have a huge number yet. And he needs something against the mangonels. He doesn't have redemption monks. And knights are going to be his answer. He could go for his own workshop, but... That would be a bit slower. He can't make that on his way up. And also, we already have Hart with a Manganel advantage. Hart would have the hills, so his Manganels wouldn't die in one hit. And Daniel's just trying to go for the Knights in this situation. Adding them in, doing the plus two armor. And he has Skirms in the back. Those Skirms that were running around the map, he has more Manganels for them to dodge. But... Hart didn't go for the forward, doesn't have any pikemen or any monks here. That forward vill could maybe have done a monastery, gotten a monk or two out. But so far, Hart has not seen the stables. Daniel doing a great job of keeping them in the back. Hart also adding in that second TC, the cheaper Britain's TC bonus coming in. Also managing to do Bosaw for his wood income. And now four knights. Four knights. And what do we have? 13 crossbows, four mangonels. And Hart may have just seen the knights there. Daniel's going to try to come in from behind. He has four knights in the back, more knights being trained from the stable at the front, and the skirmishers, as Hart goes for a few knights himself, what are those skirms going to do? They're going to pick the reinforcing crossbows, so they're going to mean that Hart can't just come forward and have more crossbows to pick off knights. And now Hart going for some knights himself, but what do knights not do? Kill knights fast enough to protect mangonels. They can definitely kill the skirms, but now it's tricky because it's crossbow against knight to protect the mangonels but daniel has seven knights he's coming in from the front he's coming in from the back heart on the hill had been pressuring that tc daniel was repairing but now daniel's going to take the fight the skirms picking off the crossbows the split on the skirms dodging the mangonel shot going to the side the mangonels can't hit them and heart is being cleaned up everything going down the knight play at just the right timing with the plus two armor and all of a sudden, Daniel takes the score lead, still up by four eco units, despite that second TC, because of these fishing ships. Eight fish traps working for Daniel. He, he, look, look at those berries. He has not even touched the berries yet in his game. The mill there at 9 HP. But oh, he, look, at, he, look at him go. Finally, sending a villager. The first gathering from those berries. <laughs> at the same time, he's now making a push on this forward gold, uh, on this forward gold from Hart. And... Hart has to fall back. He doesn't have the crossbow numbers when he lost all those at the front. When you're playing crossbows, you have to be so careful not to lose them. And that's exactly what happened in that forward fight there. Hart lost everything. And also, when you're adding in the mangonel, or the workshop in the mangonels, you're pumping mangonels. You're not pumping crossbows from a third range. Or he does have three ranges, but you're not immediately going for that. And you're not putting your foot on the gas when you're spending your wood and your gold on the mangonels instead of the crossbows. 
So it doesn't quite have the numbers that he otherwise could have had. And right now, doesn't really have Manganel numbers to deal with Skirms either. Ballistics now just on the way. And one Skirmisher from Daniel going to be annoying on that wood line. As the knight is still running around the front, Daniel's trying to find places to harass. And Hart still up in Vils. Did have that second TC. Daniel just adding in his second TC right now. That dock is limited that it's not going to be producing any more fishing ships. He's just going to be stuck on the eight he has. He doesn't have any more room. Although he is coming forward for his own workshop. Would love for him to build a second dock on that pond. That would be absolutely hilarious. But just raiding around the side with the knights, with a couple skirms here and there. Getting in with knights on that wood line. The wood line's so small, Hart not able to keep the walls maintained. The lion even getting involved. I think it's going for the knight, though. And the back gold now paying off for Hart. He's been able to mine that. Has a spear there to worry about the knights. Or to uh, help against the worry of the knights. TC also doing a good job of picking off knights. And a few knights picking off vills at the top. And some leather archer armor coming in for Daniel. Wheelbarrow also on the way. And Manganel gonna start working on the stable. Now this is maybe Daniel's turn to have Manganels that are not protected. As he's now starting to pull ahead. 65 bills to 67. Eco KD now of 8 to 1. As the knights get cleaned up, always impresses me how it took so long into the game, around 30 minutes or so, before Daniel finally was able to get some vill kills. And other than that one fishing ship, the villagers had been safe the whole game. Also part of that, I think, is just a strategy choice, that if you dive your army to kill vills, you lose your army and you open yourself up to counterattacks. And the, the more I watch Age of Empires, the more I feel like... Killing villagers actually puts you behind in many ways because you're losing army or even just HP on army to do it. It's a workshop there forward with a mangonel inside. Husbandry, husbandry on the way for Daniel for his Ethiopian knights. Part recognizing the knights are running in the back, using his crossbows to move back and protect his gold. Going for a third TC on that forward gold. And Hart's just about out of wood, honestly. I mean, he's got another lumber camp, but there's a pond there. The, the pond's working all in Daniel's favor this game, now stopping Hart from being able to chop wood efficiently. <laughs> okay, now maybe not pathfinding. Now, now the pathfinding around the pond hurt him. So, something, finally, the pond betrayed him. But third TC, cheaper for the Britons, and it's got to make sure that he has gold access now. But what he, he really doesn't have his wood access. He has some stone, and he can protect that gold with crossbows, this one with the TC. But here comes the ram. Ram, always what you do when you're thinking of making a strong push. And town watch even for hearts, so we can better keep track of the night raids. These vills somehow have to wall themselves into the lack of wood line that they have. And meanwhile, Daniel's base he is nice and safe back here. He's got a beautiful fish boom going. And now up to his third TC. 77 vills to 78, still neck and neck on the villager count, but ahead in the fish. And it's now skirms, rams, and mangonels against crossbows and mangonels. We have 32 crossbows there for Harch. And he can defend the rams with the mangonel push. One goes down. As long as the knights aren't there to pick off the mangonels, the mangonels will deal with the rams. And now there are enough crossbows that Daniel can't just dive mangonels with uh, knights before. That earlier fight was just such a good job of the skirms in the back picking off the reinforcements so the crossbow number didn't grow, and the knights being at just the right timing to pick the mangonels. And oop, uphill hit from Daniel. Kills Hart's mangonel there. Or destroys the mangonel. I guess it's not really a kill. Oh no, the gather point! No, DE! Yeah, this is the good old gather point bug where your TC gather point goes across the map. I'm not entirely sure what causes it. It's, it's, I'm gonna have to like pay really close attention and investigate that one day. But th this this happens all the time to people in DE. It happens to me, and here it's happening to Hart. I have a suspicion it's that the the mini map is a uh, box shape. 
like the area around the mini map is a box shape and it kind of protrudes from the top sometimes and sometimes you might end up like clicking it in an area where it looks like you're clicking on the map but it's actually on the mini map I don't know that's just a hypothesis I need I need to investigate more but right now heart to that that poor villager is forward but hearts up to imp up to imp and the great thing about the Britons is you get one more range as soon as you get to Imp. So if 8 range was good against Skirms, 9 range will be even better. And I'm sure he'll invest into Bracer as soon as he gets up there. Get up to 10 range and one extra attack. As right now it's 6 Pierce Armor, but you get that extra attack with Bracer and you get back to 2 damage. So you're doing twice as much damage with the crossbows against the Skirms. You don't even need Arb or Chemistry, just Bracer itself. And Gillnets! Daniel's doing Gillnets, yes! I'll make those fishing ships more efficient. I'll love to see that. Uh, ooh, that ram pathfinding around the house. A couple of mangonels working on the TC, but Imp is in the back TC. We do have four TCs for Harch, but 21 dead vills now. Daniel's opened a pretty big villager lead. Mangonel trying to get some splashes on the skirms. Daniel doing a great job of microing this whole game. Daniel's working on the TC. Daniel's healing up. Let's see. I'll, and as hearts up to imp, just being raided. I think maybe I'll. Mangonel coming forward. I'm thinking of speeding up while he's up to imp. Yeah, Daniel's gonna fall back. Okay, so I'll speed that up just a bit here. Oh, a couple of knights in the back. Oh, a couple of knights raiding that gold. Ooh, that's horrible. If knights get in on that gold, Daniel will kill so many vills if heart can't react. And now the knights are forward on the Mangonel. Daniel besieging the TC. Killing his own knight. Oh god, double kill, TC and Mangonel. And there we go, Bracer for Heart. So, only 87 vills, but the Britain's a sieve that doesn't really need too many vills. And oh, we got a castle race. We got a good old castle race in the south. Dan Daniel just sending more vills. <laughs> 25 to 21. Crossbows now, with their extra range, with Bracer, will do a great job of picking off the Mangonels as long as they're microed properly. And Hart thinking of bringing the crossbows over to stop this castle. Will he get there in time? Daniel just sending even more vills. The castle is up at the crossbows. 85%. Uh, just not in time to deny it. Another like 15 seconds earlier and that castle would have been an absolute massacre. But Daniel just enough vills to get it up. Sending everything. And on the other side as the crossbows moved out of position. More knights going straight for that back gold. That back gold now. Without walls or forest on the right side, such a weak point for Hart to have to defend. Good fight there from Daniel too, engaging the crossbows before they fell back far enough to use their range, and Daniel himself is up to imp, and Hart's eco is struggling. It's struggling to the point where he can't even make a treb. What he wants to do now is get two or three trebs out before Daniel gets up to imp so he can besiege the castle, remove that forward pressure, but on the other side, he's just losing his TC, losing gold access. He's finishing all, he's not even able to finish the gold in the back because the knights are there. Daniel keeps hitting that spot with the knights. Now Hart may be able to pick off those crossbows. Next, The next upgrade he wants is chemistry, but I don't think he even has a, uh, do you have a university left? Daniel has a forward university, that's for sure. Chemistry is cheaper than Arb and gives you plus one attack. It doesn't give you the same extra HP that the Arbalest upgrade does, but with how much cheaper it is nowadays, usually you want to prioritize Bracer and Chemistry before Arbalest. And the Treb, where was Hart going? He was thinking of going forward to build a castle. Oh, he wa he was like, I'm, I'm down. My only chance is to go for Daniel and deal a death blow real quick, but Daniel has army in the back. Hart will need to content himself with besieging the castle in the back. And Daniel's up to Imp. And Hart's gonna call the GG right there. And what, what a game! What a game from Daniel with the fish boom. And that entire strategy was based on needing to react to not having the berries, having the slower... First Feudal Age, and then Castle Age against the Britons, who had the free reign to set up their eco however they wanted. Went for the tower defense, the, the sneaky stables and the knight transition on his way up. Great army positioning and control for Daniel. And Hart went forward and wasn't able to punish Daniel, even with all these hills. So, very well done 
And I thought that was just a very interesting game, and I'd love to see a good old fish boom. So here we have Daniel, all those resources collected, really big advantage, and maybe food collected over time with those uh, fishing ships. We'll look at this. I wish I could move this pop-up, it kind of gets in the way of seeing the graph, but Art pulls ahead in early feudal, Britain's sheep bonus and taking the berries, but as they transition to castle, eventually those fish traps start to pay off, and Daniel starts to pull ahead just a bit. Maybe gets denied a bit on his farms, but then manages to pull ahead once he clears the army. Let's see, that's around 28 to 30. Let's see, let's see if we can look on the timeline and pick up when the fight was. Yeah, right here, 27 minutes, and boom, Daniel clears the army and takes the fight. Can turn the game around. And uh, let's see, more veils at the end for Daniel. So, there you have it. If you have bad berries on Arabia, Take a look, see if you have a pond. You never know when those fish traps will pay off for you.